Hey, what's up everybody? Russ with RWGResearch.com. Filament extruder uh, maker update here. Russ's filament extruder. Forgot what number this is. Probably number like 14 or something. I don't remember. I'll have to put it in the description. I kind of wanted to quickly show you what I've done because I'm actually making some really good uh, quality filament. Here's a spool. Nice and thick. It's almost too thick. Um, it's on the verge of being too thick, but it, I'd rather it be a little thick than too thin. Uh, the reason is, uh, it's not real good if you do that. Um, I'm getting better. Well, I didn't give you a very good explanation. It's too small. The layers don't stick together and stuff. I'd rather have it a little big. Um, so, real quickly here. This stuff almost looks too thick. Well, 1.7. I'm looking for 1.7. This one doesn't read down that small, it's only one digit. Need to get my better one out, but I'm not quite sure where it went. Trying to pack everything here. Uh, really briefly, I do have the water cooler. I really think that helps. Um, I did run this. This is actually running even slower. I put a different capacitor on here and I'm running it even slower uh, than I normally was. I figured out some stuff on my temperatures. Um, these temperatures are a lot lower. Uh, I think this was at 185 and 185, or I'm sorry, 385 and 385. Um, and what I did is I lowered the temperature of the nozzle here, and this a little bit higher, so it's kind of the opposite of what you would normally do in an extrusion process. But the thing is, is if I get this too hot, this starts getting real squirrely. And you saw that in my time lapse uh, of my last one that I made, the time lapse video I made. They got real squirrely and start doing stuff. I figured out the temperature is too high. And the reason is, is it's squirting out and it's kind of just doing whatever it wants. Where here it's actually being pushed out and I'm pulling it to the right diameter. Okay, and I'm going through my water bath. With that, that water bath works better than that air cooler. And I'm actually, I just pulled this spool right off of that thing and I'm printing with it. I haven't had any moisture problems um, so far. So... You know, enough, you can tell the water is running off right here, and I, I'm not really getting any moisture past this point, or else these wheels would be wet, and they're not. They're dry. So I'm not really getting any moisture problems, and yeah, it's a little messy out here. Um, the spooler I have, a couple people ask me questions about it. This has absolutely no markings on it, except for those right there, which mean absolutely nothing. Um, I am running this on a Variac this time. And it's basically just turning an AC induction motor into a slip AC induction motor. So the AC motor is actually slipping um, because it doesn't have enough voltage and it's not even really working off the limit switch. So you can take an AC induction motor, run it at a lower voltage and just let it spool. The thing is, is I might burn that motor up because it might be fan cooled or something. I don't have a clue. So we'll see how long it lasts. Uh, this spooler works okay. But I'm imagine I'm going to do something different. But temporarily, it works. Um, I dropped this thing and I broke the knob off, so I had to put a different potentiometer on there, so it looks kind of funny. Uh, yeah. Um, the only thing I need to do, or I guess an update, I found a better flat bearing to put back here, and I should have took some video of it while I had it apart. But basically, it's a roller bearing. It's a flat roller bearing. So there are roller bearings. Uh, all the way around the outside and actually I found that in something I took apart in my garage while I was uh, preparing for this move so um, yeah I need to realign this the chains kind of making some noises because it's not aligned very well so I'm gonna be aligning that once I get done with this spool um, I'm not quite sure how, how much time it's taken I filled this completely to the max and I made that entire spool here and I made uh, this much of that spool so I'm probably going to attempt to run this thing pretty low and see if I can get it to uh, make a full, a full spool now the only other thing I plan on doing um, besides making this mess a little more easy um, I actually want to create an object that swings back and forth and actually gets this on a nice uh, on a nice spool because this isn't very good uh, when you're going to unwrapping it like this you, this will knot up eventually doing this type of stuff it'll either knot up or it will get out here and it'll get caught 
so it's not really very good um, to do it like that but at the time this is what I got so I'm probably gonna end up taking a CD um, player and actually let me uh, let me go get one. I don't really want to do any editing on this video. So, here you go. Here's one right here. And this could be an easy fix. I'm not quite sure if this is what I'm going to do. But basically, I can set this motor up to travel all the way over and all the way back. And I can just keep doing that. You see the gears are on the bottom right here. It's just a, a gear, gear reduction. Let's get rid of this. We don't need this. Get that out of here. Alright. See the gear reduction here? And uh, I can just put a limit switch on one side and it will just switch polarity. I can even put a solid point here and a lever here. And so I've got... It basically moves even further out here than what it does back here. Now the other option, and I think I like this option better is a little servo motor like this. This comes out of a uh, you can find these in floppy drives um, and I'm sure yeah floppy drive I think is the only thing I got this out of and it's almost the same distance um, but if you take the floppy drive apart correctly you'll find this inside of there and it has a nice worm gear already on it and I can do the exact same thing but I can use the stepper motor so I can control it a lot uh, or I mean a stepper motor driver so I can control it a lot more fine I also have a, lots of other options with stepper motors so that's the quick update um, check the description for the number man too many of these um, this will be the last one for now and when I when I redid this uh, this has this teeny tiny little gap right there and the little parts are falling out the back um, that's all I've accumulated over the entire uh, two one and a half spools I guess but uh, the reason that there's a gap here is because this is back further than the original but this seems to be working better that different style um, yeah I wish I had more information um, and I will be updating my website with more information now one one thing is I these STL files for this little jig here um, I did post them on one of the videos It's on my website the problem is these wheels are just random sizes so we really need to redesign this with wheels that are from something you can purchase because that's kind of a bad deal can't really replicate what I have because you don't have the same wheels like I said I'm just using what I have the process works you can always find something similar so there's your there's your bit of information um, I haven't had an issue with this oh one more thing I put the other nozzle I put the bigger nozzle on there and I'm running this slower which allows this to stay perfectly straight as you can see running very nicely and uh, a few of you told me why don't you cool the tip so make the tip the right size cool it and then push it out well as soon as I touch that water on that tip this thing just binds up it will not push it through that orifice um, you would think it would especially if it's cooling it would shrink but will not do it will not push it through that orifice while it's cold not even the teeny tiny tip that tip really is uh, it's got to be hot or else it won't work so that's it uh, that's all I really got for you I got my camera here because I'm shooting the live stream just for my own reference while I walk away from this thing and yeah all right filament extruder update it is working I've got good filament I've got really pretty good tolerances within uh, plus or minus point one so point one low or point one high so a point two swing that's not too bad it's not great but if it's oversized uh, as long as you're not making tight fitting parts eh, it's all right um, I'm currently actually making a tight fitting part but um, I'm gonna try it anyway and see if it works so yeah that's all I got for you guys peace and love to you all God bless you guys and uh, I'll see you after this uh, big move I'm doing. If you guys don't know about it, I'm moving. So i got to pack up all my stuff and get out of here. Woot woot! Love you guys. And that's it. See oh, hey, what's up, everybody? So I knew uh, I didn't, uh, I wasn't going to make an edit on this video, but I wanted to add this into this video instead of making another one because that just wasn't worth it. So um, I'm currently making more filament. It's a couple days after I made that other video and I'm printing more stuff back there um, with the other video. 
uh, or the other, uh, on, in the other video, I was printing other things and I'm printing more things. But really quickly, um, I wanted to share with you a few things I learned. Um, and also, this was video number 13. So, there you go. So, really quickly, I wanted to share, you, share something with you. Um, I don't know what all I mentioned in my last video. I know one of the issues I was having was a really bad popping noise. And I fixed that. I aligned my chain. I added a, uh, a spring up there to keep tension on that chain because there's a certain portion of that chain which is stretched and causing major issues. And so that spring is actually moving a little bit if you watch it real close. And that allows the chain to be tight. That's one reason why it was popping and cracking. I also, uh, I also lubricated it and that helped out a lot. And I also moved this forward a little bit. Now I don't have any gap up there. So, a brief uh, explanation of what was what was going on there. And, uh, yeah. So, besides that, um, the tolerances, in case you were wondering, is plus or minus point 0.12 to 1.4. Um, and that's that's actually fairly good. It's, it's actually really reasonable. But, on the first roll, see I'm slightly over tolerance. And there it went up a little bit and it'll it'll drop back down. Um, but I learned that it's better to be slightly under tolerance because here's what happened. Two millimeters and um, I have an issue with my tubes. So what I actually did was I put an extra piece of tube on here that's the same diameter as this. So if this is too big, it will get caught here. And it, what it'll happen is it'll just try to pull it and it can't. And it'll just basically burn a hole in the plastic and it'll just quit. And uh, I would kind of chanced it on an object that I printed, which was this one here. And I'll show you what these are for really quickly. I kind of chanced it and I thought that might happen with it getting stuck. And it did because it was oversized. And so what I did is I just sliced the file printed the other half of it and then used some melted ABS in acetone to glue the two together. Actually worked really well. It's uh, very, very stiff. Now, you might be asking what these are for. My dad asked me to make some vacuum attachments and so I did. So this was uh, to the back of his router. Alright. And there you go. So very nice, good, nice and stiff. You can whip it around and it, it, it doesn't break off, so I don't think there's going to be an issue there. It's a nice tight fit, but still able to get it off. This is for the back of his planer. This uh, two holes gets, gets bolted on the back of his planer and then there's a vacuum hose that fits on the bottom. And then this is for his table saw. This is on the bottom and that allows to hook up a vacuum to it. So I just made him some attachments and I wanted to kind of show you quickly what I did. Um, this only issue that I had so far with the new filament is there's a slight crack right there where it looks like it got thin and then there's another one right there. See that crack right there? Okay, that little bit of a crack, it's not on the inside, it's just on the outside. So it was just a, a small portion of the filament was having issues and I don't know the reason why. But I printed out these three objects and a few other things, and I didn't have any other issues. So, um, total success on a homemade filament. I'm super happy about that. Uh, so I just want to give you an update in this video instead of making a third, fourth extra couple of videos. So, there you go. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you. I'm going to let you guys go with that. Russ with RWGResearch.com. And enjoy your day. And uh, next time, I'll be in a totally different area making more of these videos. Because I will be, like I said, adding my oscillator. And that's really the only thing I got left to do on this. And this all needs to be made up a little bit different. But for the time being, I am very pleased with the outcome of this project. So I just thought I'd let you guys know. And that's it. God bless you guys. And I'll see you another day. Peace. All right, last piece, I promise. I'm not even gonna say goodbye at the end of this video because I already did twice now. I wanted to mention one more thing because I forgot. 
I seen a lot of other people using very short screws and I'm not for sure but I'm just taking a guess that that could cause them some issues with tolerances because the RPM of this motor and the RPM of this motor are working together to create the correct tolerance so if you have a short screw you're based upon how much weight is on the actual plastic because that determines how much you're getting in at the same time to push forward now my plastic isn't melted all the way up into this point so I've got probably four to five to six turns of auger bit in here before it really starts to get into that melting zone which is right in about this area now the reason I know that is because when I tore it apart I knew where the plastic was melted at so with that said I have a constant feed pressure from my plastic all the way back here instead of the weight of this changing how much pressure I have so just a thought I wanted to share with you before I forgot and because I think that's a very valid point because um, I know some other people are having similar issues with um, the infeed they actually had to make a, a chamber with a weight on top to keep a constant weight and I don't have an issue with that even when I run it this low the tolerances still stay very nice and I think that's the reason why uh, so just keep that in mind just something I noticed and I thought I'd share with you um, the air cooler versus water cooler the water cooler is much better in my opinion to hold the tighter tolerance so that's it alright told you I wouldn't say goodbye so yeah bye <laughs>